Uh, welcome back to this course. Uh, today we are going to do the lecture 5 and the basics of the MATLAB. So, let us start with the MATLAB. <coughs> so, this is the MATLAB. So, in the previous class we have started with that how we can define the functions, anonymous function and inline function. So, in the last class we have just started the function. So, today I will give you the definite that another command. So, this is we are going to do today that how to find root of a function of a maybe equation. like I have a function. So, in the last class suppose I, I have defined the function f that is equal to inline function I have just defined maybe x square multiply by sin x. So, this is the function I have defined in the last class the x square into the sin x and then we have discussed that I can define this find the value of this function at pi or maybe some another value. Now, suppose I take a command that is called f 0. So, this is the command f 0. So, this what is the f 0? f 0 is single variable non-linear 0 finding. So, it will gives you that suppose I have a function and you want to find the zeros of that function maybe roots of that function. So, this command gives you so, that is the notation of this command that f 0 and whatever the function we are defining and x 0 is it gives you it will find out the uh, root near close to this value x 0. So, suppose the same function I want to do and I want to find out what is my root. So, I just write it x 0 that is equal to f 0 and my function f just now I have defined and I want to find the 0 value of this function near 0. So, it gives you the value of 0 or maybe I can define this one. So, that is again the value of 0. So, it means the function capital F we have defined. So, this function has the value 0 as the root of this function. Maybe I can define another function. So, this is suppose I defined another function uh, in, in this one I will change to plus 1. So, that is another function I have defined. Now, I want to find its zeros. So, this is the 0 I have defined. So, now I am defining the zeros, finding the zeros of this function near x equal to 1 and it gives you the value minus 1.068. Similarly, I can define the value near 0. So, that is another same value I am getting. It means that the roots of this function close to 0 or 1 is the same as minus this one or maybe I can define minus 1. So, it gives the minus 1. I can define a polynomial like so I define just another function I just define the function another function capital F and now in this case I define a polynomial q plus 2 star 2 dot star into x square minus 4 star x plus 1. So, this is the function I am just defined. This is the polynomial we have defined x cube plus 2 x square minus 4 x plus 1. Now, I want to find the value of this function at maybe 0 or just check. So, its value is coming 1. Now, I want to find the zeros of this function a polynomial. So, in this case suppose I want to find the value of the polynomial near 0. So, that is the x value that is 0.3. So, if I define the value of the function at 0.3 or maybe answer so that is the value 0. It means that x 0 is the root of this function. 
So by the help of this f0 command, we can just find the root of the given function, whatever the function we have near the point because here we have to give the initial approximation that in which vicinity we want to find the root. So this way we can find the root. So now to going further, so this is all about the function. Now we can define that how to how to define the script file. So let us uh, start with this one. So in this case I will go to this new and here it will give you that you what you want to find out. So I want to write a script file here. So I, this is the script file. So in this the script file whatever the command I have typed on the command windows the same thing I can do in the script and I can run the whole commands together after writing in the this script file. So let us start with this script file. So this is this is the this is my first m file. So in this case and I always start with CLC and clear all. So CLC means whatever the return on the screen when I will run this code it will clear all the commands on the command window and it will clear all the variables whatever is available in the workspace. Now I can define maybe I can define a, func a variable t. So I just define this lin space and from maybe I just define from 0 to uh, 2 pi with 100 number of default points. So that is my value of t. Now I would I define the another function the x of t. <coughs> so x of t I just uh, I can define by the way that so I just define x is equal to maybe t star maybe I can define cos of 3 star pi star t. So this is the function I am just defining. So that is my x. Now I define the y is equal to maybe the same way. So t star sin this is the vector I have to define sin 3 star pi star t. So that is my y and then, then I define the z is equal to maybe just I define t and that is it. Okay. And now suppose I want to plot this one. So I will write ej plot. So ej plot, so in this case I have 3 variables, so it is a 3D plot, so I will write ej3 and then I will define x, y and z, this one, okay. So this is I just, in the code I can always write the commands which is just for my understanding that this is for 3D plot. So 3D plot, this is, so this is the function we have defined, the parametric function in 3, in the 3D that is a function of t, x, y, z and then I want to plot this one. So now suppose I want to run this one, but before this one I have to save this function. So we write it as save as and I can define here the first dot m. So this is the command you can change the directory also maybe I can define here nptl code and then saving this one. Now I can run this code. So it will ask you to change the folder and now it gives you the answer. So that is the ej plot we have just defined and that is the spiral you know that this shows you a spiral. 
So that gives you the plot of the spiral function we have just defined here. And this is the value of the function. So x is equal to t cos 3 pi t, y is equal to t sin 3 pi t and z is equal to t. So instead of writing each command again separately and then finding the final command that is the plotting, but instead of that one the all commands we can write in the script file and then we can run the script file together and then we can have this one in the single code. So that is the script file. Similarly, I can define another function. So I can change this function instead of this maybe I can uh, now I can define here I can maybe define f plot. So f plot is what it gives you the plot of the one function only. So in this case maybe I can define f plot of x just x. So that gives you the f plot. So f plot gives you that this is the error. Okay. So I can define so f plot is this one and this is the t function I have defined. Now I can function x is equal to now I define the function x is equal to maybe sin t. So this is a function I have defined. Now I can plot this function. This is t and this is maybe x. And in this case, so now I can plot and I can run this code. So that is the plot I got. So instead of uh, writing that function in the inline form or in the function form, I can define this as a vector form. So this x is equal to sin t and I can plot this function for this one. Maybe I can define the another thing. I have, I define another function maybe y is equal to exponential is power minus t. So this is the function I am just defining and t is from 0 to 2 pi. Now what I do is that I use semi log. So semi log is then I will write semi log x. So it gives you t x or t y and then I can define grid. So that is the function we have just defined. So semi log x means it gives you the log at the x axis and value the function at the y axis. So this is the log x. So it is a 10 to the power 1, 10 to the power 0, 10 to the power minus 1, 10 to the power minus 2. So it gives you the x axis as a log value and the y y axis as just the linear value, the real numbers for error. Maybe I can define the another function uh, from here. So I define just x is equal to this. So let us define another function xx. So the xx I just defined exponential of t and then I define another function yy is equal to maybe 100. I just define 100 plus uh, exponential 3 star t. So this function I am defining. So you can see that the here the function is exponential and the here yy is another function 100 plus exponential value. Now I want to define plot this function. So if I define the plot xx and yy. So this one I just put the sign here. Now this is the plot we got. So from here you can see that x, the value of the x is 100, 200, 300 up to 500 and the value of y is also very large. 
it is going you give you the value 2 into 10 is to power 7. So, basically if we want to if we are dealing with the large values on the x axis and on the y axis. So, instead of plotting the function I can write down here log log plot. So, this is a log log plot. So, now I can define x x y y and here I can just command put the so that is the same function we are plotting here but now it is giving you the log log. So, it means that the x axis is giving you the log value of that and y axis also the log value of that. So, in this way it is very easy to understand that okay, this is the function. So, whenever you are dealing with the large value it is always better to plot in the log log form. So, this all these things you can do in the same file or maybe suppose I want to have all these func plots together. So, in this case what I will do? I will write figure 1. So, this will give the figure 1 and then I can define figure 2 here and this is another plot I am just figure 3 and this is the another plot is figure 4. Now, I can run this one. So, you can see that it gives you all the plots together. So, that is plot 4, plot 3, plot 2 and plot 1. So, all the plot comes together because I have defined the function figure each figure for each plot. Okay. So, if you want to close this one all together, so I will write just here, I will write close all. So, it will close all the graphs whatever the plots we have made. So, by this way, so this script file is basically now you understand that this script file is used whenever we want to uh, compile large number of commands together. So, that that is a script file. Now, the same way I can define another file. So, let us define the another file new and that is the function file. So, that is the function file I can define. So, this is I will start with the function and this is the output I am going to define and this is the input we are going to define and that is the name of the function. So, I will just write here maybe suppose I define just the value y and here I am defining the input I am giving maybe x and this function I am defining is sq square function. So, just I am defining this. So, in this case what I am doing? If you pass the value of x to me then the this function will give you the square of this value. So, I just write full name or maybe the small name square and that is the the body of the function. So, here I can define my function y is equal to x square and then it will return the value. The only condition is that if I want to save this function uh, square, so I have to first save this function. So, save edge. So, the name of the file dot m and the name of the function should be same. So, in this case it automatically coming squ dot m and I will save this one. Now, suppose I want to use this function later on. Now, suppose I want to run this code. So, what will happen? So, it gives you the square not enough input argument because you know that in that case we have to pass the value. So, I if I write squ and is equal to 2. So, let us see. So, it gives the value answer 4. So, now in this case I am calling the function square from here giving the value 2 here and then it is giving the value 4. What will happen if I pass maybe so in this case my x is 100. Okay. 
So, now what I will do, I will just pass the x here. Now, see it is giving the square of that one or maybe I can clear all C L C. Okay. Now, I can pass square n 2. So, I have to first go to that directory where the function is defined. So, let us see what are the files there. So, this is S Q U. So, I will write S Q U because you have to be in the same directory where the function file is saved. So, this is the function file saved and I am there. So, this is my value of the function. Now, suppose x, x I define maybe 0, 1, 2, so this is the value of the function. Now, I want to do the square of all this together. So, that gives you the value of the function. Maybe I can define the same function with the two arguments. So, let us change this one and in this case I just put the two arguments x and t. So, in this case I am putting the two argument and then I am here I am defining the squares sum and the squares. So, I am doing the squares first of each function each uh, uh, argument and then putting the square and then the sum. So, this is the value I am defining. So, again I have to save. So, this is the saved. The name is same only the argument the number of argument has changed. Now, if I want to define this function. So, this is the function it will be the same that not enough inputs. Now, I will give you the inputs here. Now, I will give 2 and 3 2 and 3. So, this is the two argument I have given. So, that gives you the value 13. What will happen if I give the one argument only? So, it is show you that not enough input arguments then we have to define because it gives the, the header or it is give you the body that whatever the function we are calling inside that function this is the defined function. So, in this from here I can see that okay, I have to give the two argument. So, I will pass the two argument and it gives you the answer. So, in this way we can define the uh, function script file and this is the function we generally call it the function uh, script uh, function file or this is the same as we used to do in the subroutines whenever we used to do programming in the Fortran uh, or maybe C. So, then in that case we have to define the subroutine. So, this is the subroutine basically we are defining. So, in this case I can call this function from any script file and that file gives me. So, let us uh, define uh, clear all CLC. So, I want to see that. So, okay, this file directory contains the function whatever we have script file defined that is first dot m and this is the function we have defined. So, let us uh, go to the script file. So, where is the my script file? open. So, open means this is the first file I am defining. Yeah, So, this is the file. So, in this case suppose I want to use the function. So, what I do this is my t is there and x sin t is there. So, I just make it maybe t is there and then <coughs> and then I will pass this one. So, now I call t is there and I call x is equal to maybe t let us multiply by t itself. Okay. So, I get this x. Now, I, do, I call the function and I will take another uh, value that is z value I am defining and in this case I will find s q u. I just call that function s q u and pass this t and x. Okay. And then I define the figure 1. So, in the figure 1 I will plot this t and maybe z. I will plot this one. All other just I just delete okay. and then I will run this one. 
So that is the plot. So see in this case we have just defined the Lin space and t is I am defining a t from 0 to 2 pi maybe I can define from 0 to 1 in this case okay and this is the plot. So I am defining the t from 0 to 1 then I have defined the x that is t square and then I call the function from here so z is equal to this one. So what is the z here? So it gives you the so what is the z? So z is this one. So z is t square plus x square because if you see the t is this one because I have a function now and x is this one. So let us uh, try this one. So I just take a t tenth value square of that plus x tenth value and then square of that. So that is the value and I just want to check that what is the tenth value of z. So that is the value of z. This and this. Okay. So instead of doing the same things here, I am calling my function from this script file and that function is used here to find the square uh, of t square plus x square and then I am using this function to find the plot in this script file. So the same uh, same MATLAB functions can be used in the different different script files and using this script files or uh, using these functions I can use my uh, codings to do the further uh, coding for whatever the scientific computing I need to do and based on this one I can always uh, use the same function in various script files. So that is uh, all we can do uh, with the function file and the script file and now I think we have uh, enough uh, knowledge about the basics of MATLAB. So now we can start our scientific computing uh, course and then we can define we can discuss various methods to whatever is given in the syllabus of the scientific computing and then we can make the MATLAB code and use the MATLAB code we can verify whatever we are doing in the scientific computing for example suppose we uh, from the next lecture we are going to start with that how the errors comes to the computation and then we will go on we will define that how we can define the roots maybe roots of a nonlinear equation and in that case we will we will discuss the various method like a bisection method or the Newton Epson secant method. So we will make the code for those methods in the in the MATLAB and then we will verify there itself. So that is all about the basics of MATLAB. So I hope uh, this is enough for you to start with the scientific computing. So we will uh, from the next lecture we are going to start with the scientific computing. So thanks for, uh, thanks for viewing, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.